Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are back down in North Florida this week, uh, at least for two days. We're gonna be hanging out down here again, hoping to find just some more of the awesome diversity this region has. And it's really easy for me to get down here from home, so it's a quick drive, quick and easy drive. And uh, yeah, we're gonna hang out here for the weekend, and uh, hopefully we'll be turning up plenty of snakes. So we're gonna head out and road cruise for most of the day today. It's gonna be a little bit toasty, but hopefully that'll bring stuff out on the road. So I will update you guys with how this goes. Oh, racer. First thing we found under this board. Very nice. First snake of the trip. So unfortunately, this guy is deep in shed, but you can tell he's got a kind of brownish tinge to his chin there, and a kind of even a brownish tinge to his belly, which is very cool, because these guys are brown chin racers after all, and not just regular old southern black racers like we see in Georgia. This would be a really sharp looking racer out of shed though, I think, but decent start to the day. A snake under the first thing we stopped to flip. So I'm just going to put this guy right back and we're going to get back to it. We've got a nice little window here before it gets too hot this morning that we're going to hike and flip and then we're probably going to road cruise for most of the rest of the trip. Alright, next set. There's another racer. What the heck? That one's even more brown looking. Look at that. Well, that was pretty fast. Two brown chins already. This one is not quite as deep in shed, and he's definitely a little bit prettier looking, but it also definitely seems like this guy's starting to go into shed as well. But a really sharp looking snake. I might actually take a quick photo of this guy. You can see the tip of his nose, and it's not so much his chin as his upper lip on this guy that's super brown. But very good looking snake. A little bit different from what we're used to seeing at least so i'll put this guy back real quick and we're going to get back to flipping but we flipped two things so far and both of them have had racers under them broadhead man's still here oh red-bellied snake wow look at that thing look at that that is awesome this is a Florida red-bellied snake. Alright guys, so our next snake of the day is something that's not very unusual for the channel, but is quite unusual for this area. This is the Florida red-bellied snake. This is one of the three red-bellied snake subspecies we have. We have the northern the Florida and then the Black Hills red belly. But here in North Florida, these guys are pretty uncommon. This is only the second one I think I've ever seen and uh, they were both in the same general area. But ever so slightly different looking from the red-bellied snakes back home. Not anything crazy, but you can see he's kind of got a little spotting. These guys are very well camouflaged here. They look just like a piece of pine straw on the forest floor. And I think that's probably part of why they aren't seen terribly often, because they're so small and inconspicuous looking in this habitat. So I'm just gonna return this guy to his tin stack and we're gonna get back to it. All right, guys, well, we've been driving slash walking around for a few hours and uh, haven't seen too much that wasn't under 10. We saw one racer on the road, but other than that, it's been a little bit hot and sunny, so we've kind of switched to dirt and we're gonna be cruising around dirt for the rest of the afternoon, I think. We might go grab some food and I'm really expecting it to kind of pick up in the evening, so these middle of the day hours can be kind of slow out here, but we're gonna keep at it and hopefully we'll encounter some stuff. We stopped to look at these cool flowers right here. Don't ask me what they are, I don't know, but if someone in the comments knows, that'd be cool. But North Florida in April is a fantastic time just to be in the woods because it just, as you can tell, it looks amazing. All the fresh burns are starting to come back to life and there's flowers, butterflies, turtles, just tons of stuff to see out in the woods. So we're gonna enjoy the rest of the day out here. And if we see stuff while we're at it, I will let you guys know. That butterfly just almost flew straight into my camera. All right, everyone, evening is going to be arriving here shortly. We just grabbed a late lunch and uh, we're back on the road. So hopefully stuff will be moving this afternoon. It was a little bit too hot 
during the middle of the day for much activity. But now it's 79 and cooling off, so it should be pretty good for snakes to be crossing the road this afternoon. So we're gonna drive around and if there's snakes on the road, I will let you guys know. Well, I thought it might have been a glass lizard, but as it would turn out, it's just a really pretty anole sitting in the road. Go on. All right, there we go. After a long, unproductive road cruise today, we have finally found our first snake, a nice little pygmy. I think this is the first snake we've seen since we saw a racer on the road first thing this morning, pretty much. <laughs> this little guy is a little bit on the thin side and uh, not particularly vibrant, but definitely nice to see. I always appreciate seeing dusky pygmies, even if they're uh, not quite as difficult to find as Carolinas. They're definitely just as beautiful in some instances. This guy is pretty average looking, but still a really nice looking snake. So I'm gonna take some pictures real quick and then we'll get him out of the road. I like how he stopped the second I started videoing. He was doing a really cool little tail twitch, but yeah, nice little dusky pygmy as our first snake of the afternoon. We're just gonna move this guy off into the pine woods over there and continue with our road cruise. We got a turtle. Are you a slider? Yes, a very dark slider. <laughs> he was in the middle of the road, but now he is not. And he's actually surprisingly well camouflaged down in this grass, but first turtle of the day and I think this might be the first road turtle of the spring actually it's taking a lot longer than it usually does but either way nice slider is our next find we're just going to leave this guy to it since he made it across the road and get back to cruising but it's getting to be evening at this point so hopefully stuff will be coming out in decent numbers here shortly well movement has been pretty abysmal there is a squirrel in the road up here I'm assuming that is a regular squirrel doesn't look quite big enough to be a fox squirrel. Yep, regular old gray squirrel. Go on, get out of the road. <laughs> Anyways, we have seen one living snake, that pygmy, and uh, we saw another DOR pygmy and uh, a DOR green snake. And that has been all that has seemingly moved over the last couple of hours, which is... Oh yeah, DOR racer. That was older though. Um, but yeah, hopefully darkness will bring a little wave of movement that tends to happen here. So hopefully that will be the case tonight. And if not, we might be a little bit screwed because it has been a pretty slow day. Uh, definitely had some highlights, but nothing crazy. So hopefully things will pick up here once it starts to get dark. But uh, the, the night cruising conditions tonight are going to be very brief and not fantastic. But this time of year, that can be okay. Oh, it's a big corn. I think. Look at that. This thing looked gigantic driving up on it. It is big. That is an awesome looking corn snake. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at this snake. Almost makes up for the lack of snakes throughout the day. It's definitely a big corn snake and it's a good looking one too. That orange is just so vibrant. All right, beautiful. Let's get you out of the road. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Common as they may be, that is a beautiful snake. And we don't, <laughs> we really don't get to see him this big often at all. I mean, he's not huge by any means, but he's way bigger than a lot of the ones we see in North Georgia. Very cool. Look at this guy. Relatively calm disposition so far for a corn snake. Normally these guys, especially whatever reason during the daytime hours, they seem to be a little snippy. That's a very gentle bite he's given me. Okay, it's getting less gentle. <laughs> Look at those teeth. Holy Goodness gracious. Ah. All right, big tooth bird eater. Here's your ditch. Continue on. Hopefully we'll see another one or two of those tonight, but. He's straight up swimming across the ditch. All right, let's see what else the night has in store for us. That's a decent start if you ask me. I'm only bleeding a little bit. A nocturnal snake, and it's abandoned water. How's it going, dude? You've been in the ditch. He's very uh, wet, <laughs> even though it's dry out, but 
Nice band of water snake. I was expecting these guys to be the most common snake of the night, and so far we've only seen one, so um, hopefully there will be more to come. I'm just going to move this guy across the road in the direction he was originally heading, and we're going to get back to it. So it's a pygmy, a night pygmy, not even 10 feet up the road from the, the rodea. We probably could have seen him from where we were sitting. So the pygmies down here are not anything like the ones up where we live in uh, regards to their behavior. They're a lot more diurnal. And in fact, I think this might only be the second one I've seen at night in this area. So kind of interesting, but we're just gonna get this guy off the road. Snakes are out, so we're gonna try to keep moving and find as many snakes as we can while they are out. Because there's gonna be a pretty tight window tonight, I think. And uh, it's just now starting. So we're gonna move this guy and get back to it. Well, it has been roughly an hour since we saw the pygmy, <laughs> which was about 30 seconds after driving away from our first snake of the night. So um, I think that means that we're going to be seeing exactly two snakes after dark tonight unless we luck up and find something on the way back to the hotel, which I doubt is gonna happen, but it's always possible. But yeah, it was definitely nice to see that big corn snake and at least get a couple of snakes on the board after dark tonight. But overall, it's just been a kind of slow first day, but we do have all day tomorrow. I'm not entirely sure how good tomorrow is gonna be because there's supposed to be a pretty high rain chance, but if I see anything else between here and the hotel, I will definitely let you guys know, and if not, I will see you guys in the morning. All right, everyone, so the next day ended up going a lot differently than I expected it to. Uh, it went incredibly well, but the wind was so terrible it made video almost impossible. I got a little bit of video, but most of it is so destroyed by the wind that I'm going to have to voice over this so that you guys can actually know what's going on. The first thing that happened was we stepped out of the car and walked around the parking lot a little bit. I know this has kind of been a trend this year. But we walked around the parking lot a little bit and I heard this weird squeaking noise and I went over to investigate and I see this. This is a corn snake beginning to eat a rat. I heard the corn snake catch the rat and normally when rats get caught by snakes, they'll make a, like a, a warning sound, like a squeaking noise. And I heard that noise and recognized it as something that I should investigate. And luckily I was actually able to find the snake. He was sitting right out in the open. Now keep in mind when I pulled up to this place, I almost didn't even get out of the car because it was so windy and there was a terrible line of really dangerous storms coming towards us uh, that ended up producing a lot of tornadoes later in the day. But luckily for us, we got in a lot of herping before that happened and we were able to have one of the best days of the year so far. Uh, as if this corn snake wasn't enough, uh, roughly you know, 10 minutes or so after sitting there looking at the corn, Caitlin spots a king snake crawling out of the same brush pile. So we've been there all of 10 minutes at this point. We, we have a corn snake eating a mouse right in front of us with a king snake crawling up to it, um, or at least, you know, in the vicinity. We didn't know what the king snake was going to do. We were wondering if the king was going to go, you know, try to interfere. Uh, the king snake was a little bit smaller than the corn snake from what I could tell, so I don't think the king could have eaten the corn even if it wanted to. But it was around this point we decided that we should probably just leave these guys to their business. The king snake ended up crawling back into the brush pile, so he was no longer visible uh, after a while. And we had people that kept taking notice of us standing there looking into this bush in the parking lot. And uh, we was just drawing a lot of attention and we didn't want the wrong people finding out that there was a snake right there. So in the snake's best interest, we decided to leave that guy and continue our hike. So we found a racer pretty quickly as our next snake of the day. And then we ran into a friend of ours and hiked with, with Sean for a little bit. And uh, we turned up what is undoubtedly the nicest Eastern King snake I've ever seen. And unfortunately, I'm really stupid and didn't realize that I could just voice over at the time. So I didn't take as much footage as I should have. But I took a lot of pictures that will be up on my other social media. But this is that snake. Absolutely incredible. Mind-blowing king snake. Just one of the most unbelievable snakes I've ever seen in my life. And this is all the video I got of it because it was so windy and I was so discouraged about the wind and not being able to get video that I was just mostly trying to focus on actually appreciating the snake and taking some good photos of it because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get uh, the video that I wanted. 
But we ended up taking some quick photos of the snake and continuing with our day. Uh, I could have sat there photographing it for hours on end, but obviously that's never a good thing for the snakes. So anyways, we released the crazy looking king snake and continued hiking. And not long after turned up our third king snake of the day. We ended up seeing a fourth uh, a little bit later, but I wasn't able to get any video of it. And it was deep in shed, so... Four king snakes total for the day. This was number three. It was a really good looking snake, but a lot more normal looking than the first two, even though we didn't get a great look at the first one because he was in the bush. And I didn't want to mess with that snake because I worried that I would have possibly disturbed the corn snake in the process if I tried to catch the king. So we ended up seeing this little alligator a few minutes later. And then we had a pretty unproductive stretch of hiking where we didn't see too much until right before we ended up calling it a day. And then we found this nice little pygmy. It was actually a very big pygmy rattlesnake that was coiled up at the base of a bush. He was in a perfect position for photos, so I took a lot of pics. And I uh, was pretty content with how the day had gone at this point, so we decided to try to get in front of the nasty storm system that ended up producing a bunch of tornadoes in South Georgia, and we had to drive right through them all to get home. So it was an exciting drive home nonetheless. So I'm going to include some photos here at the end just because I know I didn't have a lot of video from this day due to the wind. So here's a couple of still shots and I'll talk about them a little bit. So here's a better look at that first king snake. I know this is probably the snake that y'all got the least uh, video of from this day in the field. He was uh, in a pretty good spot for photos, but I just couldn't get very close with my camera. I was using a 100 millimeter zoom lens to take this picture, so I was not close to him at all, but my, my technology allowed me to actually get a photo up close that looked a lot better than the video I was able to get with my phone. So I decided I'd throw this up so y'all can actually see what the snake looks like. He had some pretty cool speckling going on in his bands and was a really nice looking snake overall. And it would have been awesome to see him entirely, but I don't regret my decision to leave that snake alone. So here is another look at the corn snake eating. Uh, I got some pretty good stills that I'm fairly happy with, and I'm, I'm decently happy with how the video came out too, but I just figured I would throw this up for anyone who wants to see it. And here is another look at possibly my favorite eastern king snake if not my favorite snake i've ever found in the wild this is a pretty typical looking mosaic eastern king snake this is a naturally occurring morph um, that is present in almost all places you can find eastern king snakes but it's a lot more common than others uh, i know a lot of people are going to be wondering if this is an apalachicola king snake it is not this is just an eastern king snake with some crazy phenotype going on this snakes that look like this or more or less like this can pop up anywhere within the range of eastern king snakes. Finding one of these wild mosaic king snakes has been a long time goal of mine and this is definitely the most or the highest expression mosaic I've ever seen. Uh, mosaicism is kind of a spectrum where you have snakes that are low expression and snakes that are super high expression and I would consider this my first high expression mosaic eastern king snake and uh, definitely one of my favorite snakes I have ever found in the wild. And to wrap this up, here is the third king snake of the day. Uh, we did end up finding a fourth, like I said, but it was deep in shed and went down a hole. Uh, but this is number three. He was pretty typical, but here's a better look at him than any of the crappy video I was able to get because he never stopped crawling except for a brief moment in which I was able to take this picture. So really handsome adult female king. I think three of the kings we saw this day were females. And then the one in the brush pile, we couldn't, couldn't say for sure because we couldn't see the tail. Hopefully this video still came out pretty good despite the fact that I had to do some voiceover here at the end. I know it's not the same and hopefully I was able to kind of tell the story of what happened that day even though I wasn't able to record it all on video as it happened like I usually do. So hopefully you guys still enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching and I'm going to wrap this episode up here because I have to pack and get ready for an out-of-state trip. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.